This is Wayne Dober from the Fun House, and you're listening to the Tim Owen Harley Show. Welcome to the Tim Owen Harley Show. Thank you for listening to the Tim Mo and Harley Show. I am Tim Mo. Over there is my partner in mind crime, Mr. Ben Harley. Say hello, Harley. What is happening, people? Ben Hack and Slash Harley. <laughs> That's me, man. Tell that you. is you. That is me. <laughs> so, yes, hello, Mr. Is. Ben Harley. How the hell are you? you doing? doing good, Tim Mo. How about yourself? Not man? too bad. Not too bad. Hello to the yeah. deep thinkers. Hope you are all hello, well. Deep Mr. Ben Harley, uh, last time we were here yes, on this. On this adorable little program here we call a show or a podcast, we were under yeah. snow. Holy snowy. Oh, we my were God. Last snow. Now uh, it's like 60. And I told you last week, by the time you hear this, <laughs> yeah. it's going to be 50 and raining. And I'll be darned if yesterday it wasn't 50 and raining. So uh, today right. <laughs> it's supposed to get to 60 and sunny and there's still snow in the ground. But boy, it's going quickly. And uh, okay. I like a big snow, Mr. Bernhardt. Now you Is said it you really got sixty degrees. Oh, yeah, geez. it's gonna be sixty degrees here. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Wow. Yesterday was about fifty. Almost. That's the hey. That's the South for you, baby. That's what it is now. Yeah. It is. Now this is the South. <laughs> All right. Now, unfortunately, yeah. now maybe not unfortunately, but just as a contrast, I should say, uh, you are a little bit north. Now we got, I'd yes. say, about eight inches of snow. And yeah. Ohio rolled their eyes at us. <laughs> yeah. How much snow did so, you get? Nineteen inches, Tim. <laughs> that sounds like a porn movie. Yes, not a yes. No, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh shoot! <laughs> yes, my friend. It um, we got quite a bit, buddy. Like we had like a two day total that was crazy, you know, and uh-huh. almost it almost beat or did beat the record. We, we had a blizzard in 78 where it just, we did too. Yes. We all had that. Yeah. That was huge. Yeah. 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 That's that's when I had the seven foot snow drifts in my front yard and I'm in Illinois. Yes. So yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, and, um, we were like, it was like Bowling Green, Ohio, uh, which is, you know, 20 minutes from here was like the epicenter of Uh that storm, you know? So we got crushed pretty hard, but this last time we either, beat that record for the two day total i think uh-huh. or something it was crazy but uh yeah um quite a lot of snow out there tim and i know it's i think oh uh, it's uh, i know yesterday it was in the 30s like 37 or something uh-huh. so yeah it started stuff started to melt yesterday but i'm not sure today what it, but uh it's supposed to warm up a little bit got too. you yeah we've been thawing uh, for a couple days here so right yeah. now it's it's looking i mean i mean well it's like a lake outside now because all the, yeah. you know, and, and for okay. us getting like eight inches of snow, it was probably about, I'd say about eight inches of snow. We That's got, a lot. it's a lot yeah, for so us you, down here. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's no yeah. record or anything, but, uh, Mr. Ben Harley, I see here. So I did watch a few things this week that I go through them as per okay. usual. Oh, real quick here. Um, our good friend, Mr. Mark diamond, uh, from the dwarves, we, we've yes, mentioned sir. him quite a bit, but he, uh, yeah. he did send me a note, <clears throat> Uh, that said, uh, yes, that simply it simply said, uh, just got this piece of boop in the mail. <laughs> I opened up the message. Yeah. It was a picture of Grizzly 2. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I'm telling him, I go, all I can tell you is this. You will know where the girl band gets their milk from. And I said, I know you have no idea what that means right now, but you'll know. And then I warned you'll him, do know. not go near that movie sober. It's not right. Do not yeah. do it. It's, it's not worth it. But he told me that he was uh, he was asking me about the uh, the Hills Have Eyes, the original Hills Have Eyes 2. Not okay. the first one. The original oh, yeah. Wes Craven Hills Have Eyes 2, yeah. which we reviewed. And I was very... Oh, I was very torn about it. I liked it when I was a kid, and it was real difficult yeah. to get through as, as we were adults. And so he was just asking me about the different you know discs and stuff. And... And when he was watching, he sent me a note. He said, oh, he goes, uh, they're ripping on Tarzana, California, in this movie. He goes, I totally oh, forgot yeah. about that. He's like, that's where I'm from. He goes, that's where I, I think that's oh, where really? he's born is Tarzana. And he said, oh, wow. was, and I did not know this. He said, yeah, he goes, a little fun little tidbit. That's also where Edgar Rice Burroughs lived or is from or lived, I guess. And that's why they call it Tarzana. 
Literally, oh, that's really? why they call the town Tarzana because that's I had no idea. <laughs> well, that's kind of a neat little that's little awesome. tidbit. Yeah, so I'm yeah, passing that along uh, to you guys too. The Tarzana is named yeah, after Tarzana. Tarzana. I guess it stands to reason, <laughs> you know, when you think about it. Yeah, so, right. But, Why not? Uh, yeah. yeah, but that that poor sob, that's awesome. poor sob. That, but no matter what, now Mr. Ben Harley, that poor sob yeah. has Grizzly too in his house. Oh, poor guy! Yeah. <laughs> he lost an IQ point. I lost three <laughs> because I have oh. a work print too, so it's not fair. Yeah, that work print is something else. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh gosh! I need to go back to that work print to really see if that last shot is in that work print. I don't remember that last shot of that bear in that yeah, work I, print. You I, do? I kind of do. Yeah, wow. I do because it was awful odd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, the whole thing's odd. The whole what? thing is odd. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's. So it's extremely odd. Let's put it that way. Right, yeah, it right. Was extremely odd, well, so. speaking of extremely <laughs> odd, Mr. Ben Harley, let's yes, just sir. jump into what I watched this week. Okay. And uh, yeah. uh, let's see. So something that fits the extremely odd bill would be from 1977. Right away, 1977. Ooh, right. You're you're, yeah. you're swimming in some shark infested waters. Yeah. Figuratively and literally. <laughs> um, I watched Deathbed, the bed that eats. <laughs> <laughs> Death bed, the bed that eats. Huh? Filmed at Garwood Mansion on Keelson Island outside Detroit. Really? Yes. Okay. Which I guess that uh, mansion has been demolished a long time ago by now. I but think uh, so, yeah. but if you've ever heard of a Keelson Island around Detroit, that's where it was. Um, mm, okay. Well, and uh, apparently Patton Oswalt refers to this movie uh, on his 2007 CD Werewolves and Lollipops. And he's, I guess it's like a stand up CD, and he's telling the, the audience that this movie exists. However, he calls it Deathbed, the bed that eats people. That's not what it's oh, called. Okay. It's called Deathbed, the bed that eats. Well, of course, you can imagine I put this thing in because I'm like, I am going to do some now legal in Illinois drugs. Yeah. And I'm going to yes. drink a little bit, and I'm going to watch myself a bed that eats people. And I got to tell you, what I ended up. How'd it go? <laughs> well, <laughs> I got to tell you what I ended up watching was a little more adult and interesting than I thought it was going to. It was more of an art house <laughs> film than it was a goofy okay. trauma movie. I can I can okay. tell you that for sure. It reminded me of the movie with um, Scarlett Johansson in it. I'm right there. We're happy. Now, this is okay. a movie where Scarlett Johansson is <laughs> nude right. in it a lot. Oh, and I do believe dang. it's called Under the Skin. I think it was called, and it's this really weird movie where she is like an alien that, um, like a succubus alien that's going after men. Okay. But the way they, the way they show it is very artistic to where she, she'll, she'll start making love to men. And it's, it's, it's sort of like they're in like this dream world and these men get kind of pulled down into like a, like a, a pool of water or something. And this okay. is all shot okay. very artistically. So it's not, yeah. you know, she's not like doing them and hacking their heads off. It's not like that. It's very, <laughs> very artistic. And to be quite yeah. frank with you, this movie really did remind me a lot of that, where these people would go lay on this bed and the bed would like liquefy and they would like kind of fall into it. Uh, like in Prince of yeah. Darkness. Remember in Prince of Darkness okay. when they're yeah. behind the mirror yeah. And they're in like yeah. a liquid and they're trying to get out of the mirror. And it's real artistic and real kind of weird yeah. and psychedelic. It's a lot like that. So okay. I went in ready to tell you, Mr. Ben Harley, about how goofy and hilarious this. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's definitely more of an art, art house kind of strange film. And there's gore in it. And the bed does eat people. Yeah. And, um, and <laughs> who owns the bed, Tim? I, you know, it's. It, well, the house is abandoned. It's one of these things where people are going there. Oh, okay. You know, for okay. Yeah. I don't even know if it's even left to no good or not. They're just there, like either someone's yeah. lost or someone shows up, and and they yeah. have this thing where there's like this disembodied spirit of a oh a Victorian era kind of man, and he's stuck living behind a mirror where the bed okay. is, and so he is sort of like the guy who's a ghost trapped behind a mirror by a bed and he's witnessing these people being eaten by the bed. So he's sort of the narration of the film in a way. It's a lot more interesting than I thought it would be. And I can't even say I didn't like it. You know, I, it's definitely for a certain taste and I do like odd films. Um, 
<laughs> but it is on Prime if you want to give it a shot. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, definitely. if you want to try a yeah. movie, it's called Be- Death Bed, The Bed That Eats. <laughs> There's I'm your shot. There's your opportunity. <laughs> yeah. It's right there. You got it. So, all right, moving on. Your wish has been granted. Right, right. right. Moving on, Mr. Uh, ben Early from 1988. Watch ooh, the movie like Cop with James okay. Woods and Charles Durning. Yeah. It. So I'm kind of on a. Oh, okay. Angie and I are on a little bit of a James Woods freak out because we watched what was it, bestseller? I think last week. Which is James Woods, and then this week uh, we yeah. watched Cop with James Woods in it. Um, good movie, nice. Good, good movie. Good, um, good. It is kind of funny though because you know we're watching this movie, and it's it's a the plot is he is a kind of a grizzled cop. Uh, James okay. Woods is, and and there's been murders in the area. And I, I think it's New York. I think I think that takes place in New York. But the thing is, is that he's convinced it's a serial killer. Okay. But, like, nobody in the forest believes him and stuff. So they kind of think he's going off the deep end because he okay. thinks that there's a serial killer and nobody else believes him. So it, it's uh, Charles Durning in it. Is he good? Yeah, Charles Durning is pretty good in it. He plays a guy that's kind of like, uh, oh, he's above James Woods in the precinct. So he's kind of his mentor oh, okay. in a way. Um, okay. But I got to tell you, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good movie, but, um, we were watching it, and, and I started laughing because I told Angio, you know, I go, this is 1988, and um, yeah. <laughs> there has been some criticism of, let's, I, I, we, no politics zone, so I'm going to stare at it right now, yes. but there has been criticism of police department procedures. How about that? Is that fair okay. enough to there say that, that in the country sure. yeah. there has been criticism in that? End of story, that's it. But it was hilarious. No. In, in an unfortunate, hilarious way, watching this movie going, did James Woods just go, hey, stop, bang? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> he shoots How people you- for looking at him wrong and walks away with no repercussions whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, and apparently they were trying to do like a Dirty Harry-esque type of, but James Woods, man, is not Clint Eastwood. And it's like, He's just shooting people with like nobody's like questioning why he shot anybody or nothing. He just moves on <laughs> to that scene, you know. And these people did not deserve to be shot at all. You know, <laughs> you have any information for me? No. Pow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's you awesome. know, a guy gets out of yeah. the car, starts running. Pow. Oh, yeah. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> right so uh oh, it, it was it was a fun movie it was funny but but it does it, it, one of those wow we've come a long way man <laughs> they don't yeah. even do that in movies anymore you know but yeah no, he was uh-uh. just shooting anyone <laughs> indiscriminately so i actually think it was la i think they were i don't know anyway anyway okay. but it, it, it was sort of like a movie that was popular back in the late 80s but i think the actual company the film company it was like the last movie they did really and so okay. i i, I I don't know. Like it's one of those deals where whoever owns the rights didn't have an opportunity. I think to push the movie more because it is good for eighty eight, okay. especially. It's a good cop drama. You know, sure. it's just a little jarring when you realize, golly, he really is shooting anybody into <laughs> You know, yeah. and and I think a lot of it is, you know, we 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 watch that stuff and we and it normalizes it in our minds whether or not it was right. happening for real or not. I'll leave that up to people. Above my pay grade. I'm just saying it was funny though because it was like, "Woo, yeah, that's not that's not good police procedure." Good gravy. No, no. You know oh my saying? god. Hey, are you Frank? No. Pow. Oh. Well, you ought to have been. You know. Yeah. So. All right, moving on, Mr. Yeah. Ben Harley. Uh, from 1969, uh, watch the movie oh, okay. Marooned. Uh, now this has a dis- yes, this has the distinction of winning Academy Award for Best Special Effects the year after two thousand one, <laughs> and the effects <laughs> okay. are about yeah. a quarter as good. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, uh, right. It's a, it's got Gregory Heck, uh, Gregory Heck, Gregory Peck. <laughs> Pecks. Yeah. yeah, Gregory Heck. Gregory Heck. Heck, those are nice packs. <laughs> anyway, Gregory yeah. Peck, um, Richard Crenna, uh, Gene Hackman. Uh, nice. David okay. Jansen, James Franciscus, uh, d- directed by John Sturgis, do like The Great Escape and stuff. It's yeah. a real okay. by the numbers space movie. So you got to remember, sixty nine. This is when we were going to the moon and stuff. So people were really interested in the intricacies of 
space, space. travel, you know, how are we going to, yeah. you know, the, the launch pad, everything, you know? So this is a kind of a, a techie kind of, you know, it, it, it doesn't lend itself for a movie that holds up well. Let's okay. put it that way. You know, it's, it's like, you know, they basically had the same, or they had, I guess, half the technology we have in our cell phones today. So wow. really you're not as dazzled anymore as you were in 1969 no. seeing the amazing technology that let us break the earth's atmosphere. So, but, um, eh, you know, I got to say me and Andrew were a little like, eh. I saw when I was yeah. a kid and I thought it was okay. Um, there yeah. was some suspenseful moments and they are kind of, it is about a movie about some astronauts that are stuck up in space. It's kind of like Apollo 13. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I've seen that one or not. Marooned. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's it's okay. It's okay. You know, it's it's okay. if you see it, I think you might enjoy watching it once, but it's not something you're gonna go back to a bunch of times. But, right. uh, okay. All right. Anyway, let's put our eyeballs on that. Uh let's see here from uh, here's one from nineteen eighty six. Oh, okay. You might like this movie. We watched the movie Crossroads. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Walter yeah. Hill film with Ralph Macchio and Joe Seneca Yo. in it and Jamie Gertz. Yeah. Yeah. About uh the uh about Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson story. Yeah, yeah. and his missing guitar. Now, get Steve Vai, doesn't he in that? Yeah, one? he cuts heads. Cuts heads with yeah. old Jack Butler, played by yeah. Steve <laughs> Vai. So uh, Steve I Vai. used to just absolutely love this movie when I was a kid. Now I yeah. am a guitar player. I was a guitar yes. player started playing when I was five. So by the time this movie came out, I'd been playing for quite a while already. So I really dug this movie because it is all about guitar. Yes. And all about the Delta Blues and stuff, which I was pretty into. I'm a St. Louis guy. Uh, our yeah. hockey team's called the Blues for a reason. That's yeah, yes. It's kind of in yeah. our blood a little bit around yes. here. Uh-huh. See, at least I'm not a huge Blues guy, but it's no, just in uh-huh. our blood. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't help but to throw a little bluesy something here or there when I'm playing, you know, or whatever. It's yeah, just, my, yeah, my older brother is really was – I still listen to the Blues. Not quite – he was actually president of the Black Swamp Blues Society. Really? Yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah, and he helped bring a lot of you know bands and uh-huh. stuff into town and things like that. And they would hmm. put on shows. Yeah, so nice, he was very good, really nice. into that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had a really good time watching Crossroads. I can tell you this: it holds up great, and I'll tell you why. Because Joe Seneca as Blind Dog yeah. Fulton in that movie, he should have yeah. won an Academy Award for Best Actor. And yeah. and I'm going to put this out there too: I'm not a fan. Never have been. Never will be. Ralph Macchio can't say he didn't deserve something too. That was a great. I mean, amazingly acted film is a well-written film. It's touching. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it. Oh, what a, a great, long, great long. movie. I mean, just a great. Well, that's good to hear you say that it, held, it holds up. Yes. It has held up. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I have to go back and check that out. Holding up really, really nicely. So you'll be glad to hear that. Um, here's one for you. Last, okay. last up, too. Last up. Okay. From 2013. This is something I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, All right. future. Uh, directed by Larry Fessenden who does a lot of low-budget films, pretty well-respected uh, guy in cinema, let's say. Uh, sure. There's a movie called Beneath, all right? Okay. And it was, I believe, was either made for or released by Chiller, the, the TV channel okay. Chiller or whatever. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so this is like this group of friends, very, very, very simple plot, a group of friends who have their own internal struggles being friends long-term friends with that that you okay. have to deal with while watching this movie the little drama between them but they all go out on a lake all right on like a okay. like a canoe type of deal a little fishing boat you know all right yeah. and they get stuck out there with a giant man-eating fish oh now oh so basically sort of like jaws on a lake okay okay let's put it that way but here's the group all right around. What's large that? mouth bass. Is it a grouper or large mouth bass? It just looks like a big fish. <laughs> uh, it just looks like a big fish. I mean, to be honest with you, the yeah. fish, uh, the face of the fish looks hilarious. But but the uh, but when you see it swimming in the lake and stuff, it, it's yeah. pretty creepy. It looks like a a ten foot long fish. I mean, it looks like a big fish swimming around. It's practical, you know. Yeah. So it, it it's not bad. That's not really the problem. The problem is this: we have a group of friends. <laughs> yeah. They're on a boat, right? Like a fishing boat on yeah. a lake. I'm not talking about Lake Michigan, okay? Right. They're on a lake, <laughs> yeah. like a Lake Placid yeah. type of lake. They go out in the middle okay. of the lake, and they start getting attacked by this giant fish. Okay. And they're stuck out there. Why? 
Yeah, it was. I don't know it, why they were stuck uh, out there. That's the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay. my <laughs> thing is this: it brought me back to, it brought me back to Mark Diamond again, who, who basically is like the third wheel in the show at this point. But, but no, yeah. <laughs> it brought me back to when we were talking about uh, the uh, shark exploitation movies. We yes. had a little fun part of the conversation where I was asking him, like, is it different for him and his friends with Jaws because they live by the ocean? And I am landlocked. I don't live anywhere yeah. near a large body of water except for the Mississippi, but I can clearly see across it. It's not that big. You know, I mean, it's like it's it's a big river, you know, but, but I mean, I don't have I don't have like shark infested waters anywhere near me. You know, okay. I don't have anything like that. Well, he he's. He was intrigued by that, and so he never really thought about that before. But he did bring up the fact that he's afraid of lakes. That the ocean doesn't bother him whatsoever. The ocean, even though he knows the ocean's very dangerous, he goes out in the ocean and jumps in there. It's no big deal. Lakes, on the other hand, he don't like it. It's dark, cold. It's like dark, like the water. You can't see the water. It's muddy in the bottom and slimy. and and He just doesn't know what's in those things. Well, he's a California guy. Yeah. It's not exactly a land of a thousand lakes, you know. He's by no, the ocean. No. He's by the ocean. Yeah. We're at least me. I know you have the Great Lakes by you, so you actually do yeah. have a sea by you. Also, I yeah. don't have anything like yeah. that. Yeah, and I mean, I can be by the lake in ten minutes. Right, I can be the Erie, you know. And then plus, I live right by the river, and the Maumee River is a big river. It's not quite the Mississippi, but it's brown and it's just as wide. <laughs> but most places, <laughs> right, it right. Is. Size, a uh, good sized river which empties right into Lake Erie. Sure. Yeah. Well, for me, like we have Lake of the Ozarks and we have yeah. Table Rock Lake, which are big fishing lakes. But sure. here's my point this had to have been written by people who have never really been on lakes, like Mark Diamond, who oh, doesn't wow. like lakes, okay. you know, because I'm thinking, yeah. Ben Harley, you've been on a boat in a lake. I don't mean yes. Lake Erie or Lake Michigan. I mean on a lake. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Like my, yeah, right. like my dad's cottage or Barton yes. Lake there. Yeah. Right. Have you ever been in a boat on the middle of the lake and sat there and been stuck? No. What happens? You tell me. I'm not going to tell you. What happens well, usually, if you... Well, usually, depend on what size boat you got there, uh, you could either row back. <laughs> well, sure. Yeah. Okay, well, let, let, me, let me set this back, up for I don't you. think I would swim back with a giant... <laughs> no, no. Let, let, me, let me set this up yeah. for you a little bit more. So they, okay. they, they're out in the middle of the lake and, they, and they're swimming, okay... And, yeah. and, and, and the, the big fish attacks them. So that, that's how they realize, oh, crap, there's a giant fish yeah. in this lake that's going to attack us. They get back to the boat, and they start trying to beat the stein out of it with the, with the yeah. oars. And, of course, yeah. they break the oars, and the, it bites oh, one of the okay. oars in half. So they have no more oars left, okay? So they're right. in the middle of the, of the water, all right? Now, I, yeah. I have a really simple answer for this, but I'm just asking you if you know. What's the problem with this scenario? Well, um, have you ever, let me, let me help. Have you okay, ever so, sat yeah. in a boat in a lake and it sits still? No, I was say, because first off you're going to, the tide or just the, the, you know, it's going to carry you yes. one way or the other. Yes. Either to shore or the other side of the lake. Yes. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. And yeah. how long would that yeah. take? About 10 minutes, 20 minutes? Yeah. If yeah, you don't have an I anchor, <clears throat> if yeah. you don't have an anchor, you are going to be, you're going to float. Yes. And you're going to float over to one of the shores. Yes. Have you, I mean, it's it actually is what bothers you when you fish, right? Mm -hmm. When you fish, yeah. you just can't sit there and drink a beer and stick your pole in. You have to, it, you have to either be on, on a bank drop or you anchor. can tie, you drop anchor <laughs> yeah. or you have to tie yourself yeah. to a tree hanging over the yeah. side of the lake. Right. And and yeah. then what happens? Your boat twists around the tree in circles and stuff because yes. it won't sit still, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, these mm -hmm. people are sitting in the middle of the lake with the boat sitting. They're not going anywhere. And not they're getting attacked anywhere. by right. this fish going, how do we get back to the shore? <laughs> like it was this big life or death thing. I'm like, yeah, just sit there for 10 minutes. You'll go to the shore. What the hell? Yeah. And that's why right. I'm thinking whoever wrote it, I can't believe who – I can't believe there weren't people – Making this film, who were like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, no. like the even on a calm t time, even mm -hmm. a, if it's calm, you're still gonna drift. Yes, you're gonna drift one way or the other. And like you said, the boat's gonna turn around, and mm -hmm. it's gonna turn a couple times. It's gonna go to wherever the whichever way the wind's blowing, and right. or it's yeah, you're going, you're and, going and that way, right? Even if it's completely calm and still, you yeah, are not gonna still, sit still. You're not going to sit it, still. 
Yeah, out at uh, my dad's lake, they they take and uh, they'll they'll put like it depends on how many people are out there, but sometimes you'll have five to ten pontoons mm-hmm. tied up to tied up to each other, mm-hmm. so that you can go from one pontoon to the next and hang out. You know, it's just like a floating party or whatever right but know? they have to be anchored but everybody well. has to put yes. everybody puts their anchors you yes. can't have one person anchor and and still even with even that with that you're still gonna it's have some movement you are right you're, you know you're gonna move a little or you're you're gonna twist or turn one way or the other right well, if you have a breeze yeah. come up or something yes. you're definitely yeah. gonna move a little bit the anchor yeah. will just hold you steady yeah. While while there's nothing like that happening, it'll hold you steady so that you don't yeah. go to the shore. That's why we have anchors to do that. And I'm watching this movie going, first of all, it's like an okay movie. It's it's a bunch of like uh, people who are claiming that this was like their graduation from high school trip. So we have kids immediately. So I'm kind of a little annoyed yeah. by them to begin with because sure. Ben Harley, I, I, I'm, I have a whole collection of canes like – I have a different cane to wave for different occasions at this point. Yeah, different situations. Right, so I don't like that to begin with, but I'm watching this movie going, okay, I understand this fish is a threat. And the fish to me was impressive. It looks a little silly because fish look yeah. silly. Yes. So it looks a little silly. It has like kind of monster teeth that make it look a little silly too. But it actually like from a lot of angles, the fish looks very convincing to be honest with you. Okay. So the fish is good. I like the idea. You know, it's sort of like um, Creep Show 2. In yes. Creepshow 2, they have the raft. You remember the raft? Yeah. The one where the mm-hmm. kids With are all the, on the raft. Yeah. Now, yeah, and then that slime. The, the slime oil slick comes. type of thing. Yeah, yeah it comes yeah. out there. Now, that oil slick kind of holds them out in the middle of that lake. Yeah. And then it kind of like goes around them and stuff, and it's holding them there. So there's a there, – there, you can almost say, well, if they start drifting, that oil slick seems to kind of float by them and push them back. You know, or yeah. something like that. So that I can understand. This is not happening like that. The fish bonks the boat. Like Jaws, like in the movie Jaws, where the yeah. shark like hits the 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 orca or whatever. So it does hit yeah. the boat a few times and stuff. But even that, if you think about it, like the boat gets hit and it rocks back and forth and sits still. That's not how <laughs> yeah. a boat works in no. water. Uh-uh. No. So my uh-uh. thought process is saying, who? Unfortunately, this was an interesting idea, but I, I, I it throws me out of it every time. When I see that boat sit still, because I'm like, it's not. Sure. I mean, just sit there for a while. Don't do anything. Yeah. Just right. sit there, right. and the boat will go to the shore. So anyway, it really, really bothers me watching it, and it really makes yeah, me it think. Takes away from the movie. Yes, yeah. right. And I think that if you want to write a movie or make a movie about kids in a boat, a fishing boat on a lake, spend a week on the on a lake on a boat. Yeah, right. right. And then you will compel people when you make because you can do it. You could make that story, Ben Harley. You mm-hmm. could you yeah. could have something as simple as what is what are things in lakes that are problems, like big branches and things and like mm-hmm. dead trees in the bottom that you can get hung up on. Yeah. Right? Yep. Well, they're not hung up yeah. on anything. Even the that even the fish could have pulled you around or pushed you around, kept you out there. Yes. Yeah. And there's yeah. so there's a lot of things like that. And like one kid gets away and he comes back in a boat with a motor. Okay. okay. Now, so there's yeah. there's one fishing boat, and that that one just had oars, and then there's another fishing boat that the kid who escapes goes and gets a boat with a motor, and comes back to save the kids, the other yeah. kids. Okay. And they're all sitting in the middle of this lake, like thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm sitting like, when the boat is sitting still, and this other kid is on a boat with a motor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then yeah. they tie the boat, so he throws the kids a rope. Now now. They're having problems on the boat. There's a lot of backstabbing going on the boat. And I mean lethal, yeah. lethal backstabbing going on the boat. It's pretty rough on the boat. Yeah. So so they don't get along. So nobody trusts each other. So I get that. So the kid doesn't want to bring the, the other kids onto his boat because he doesn't trust that they're not going to harm him. But he wants okay. to save them still. So he throws them a rope. Right. Okay? No, and, and do you see anything illogical about that at all? So here, <laughs> here you have a rope. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the motor and I'm gonna pull you over to the shore. Right, right. Makes sense. You very feasible, right? You could do that easily, sure. right? No yeah. big deal yeah. at all. You could probably, with your fist, you could probably <laughs> hold the rope, right? And the sure. person on the other boat could, with their fist, hold the rope, and you could tow them to, shore. Them to shore. And yes. you wouldn't yeah. even hurt their hand, would you? As long as they knew no. what they were doing, as long as they were, you were doing this gently, they could. Okay, well, not in this movie, Ben Harley. Physics don't apply. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. When he throws him the rope, there's two brothers on the stranded boat, and the one looks at the other one and goes, he does know that that motor isn't strong enough to pull both boats, right? And the other guy goes, he'll figure it out. And I'm looking Wait. at him like, what the what? fuck did you just say? That makes no sense. So what happens? So he throw, so, so we have ropes between two boats, two little yeah. aluminum boats. fishing boats. <laughs> yeah. With a little like even rude motor. One has like a little even rude motor. All right. Okay. Yeah. You, we, yeah. you know the language I'm speaking here, right? You know yes, what I'm sir. About. I just got one. Yeah, so he I tries to tow him oh. and he can't pull the other boat. So the bo- so no the boat starts spinning and the rope tangles around the guy's necks and chokes him out. Wow! Yeah, physics don't apply. <laughs> what in the hell, Tim? I've been towed by another boat. We broke down actually. Me and a buddy of mine were on one of them little, you know, the paddle boats. Right. And now I've <laughs> we were good. going and the guy was towing us. Was there drinking went, involved in this? Yeah, well, no, we were actually a little bit younger. Oh, okay. Well, I know. Okay. <laughs> but, well, here's the thing is the current was too bad. We, it, was, it was windy out there, and we could not paddle. Oh, gotcha. Fat. Right. We were paddling as hard as we could, but we were just going nowhere because it was windy. And so the guy decided to help tow us in, but when he did, he started going too fast. And Tim, when you see the front of a boat that you're in start to go underwater, <laughs> yes, you start was. to, yeah, yeah. So, but right. uh, yeah, that's scary. But yeah, that doesn't sound like anything that was remotely sounds normal. Like, no, 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 no. First no. off, no, a, a little boat like that could pull another little boat, no problem. Right now, you know. Well, I mean, you, you have like maybe you, a couple of them could have jumped in the other boat and we could have had half and half. You know, <laughs> right. I, I was just blown away by the ineptitude of the writing of the yeah. story. I mean, I was like, I was like, if you watch that Jaws, you yeah. think people might have been in the ocean once, or at least they don't. They yeah. don't try to invent things that are like. There's nothing wrong about that movie. Does it make sense? Like, there's nothing like you don't really right. see any technical errors when you're watching that, you know. And like, yeah. and, and you can get down to the nitty gritty of what's going on. Now, I'm not suggesting that this low budget movie about a killer fish in a lake. Is going to right. have any kind of technical prowess like Jaws. But I mean, you have a fish that actually <laughs> yep. looks that good. It's a good looking fish. Yep. I mean, when you have that and you have some really like well respected people making a movie, and then you're watching these kids who are stuck out in a little trolling boat, a little fishing boat, and you're like, just that just doesn't yeah, make, make sense. sense. What the hell is the no. water made of syrup? Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And so, and again, so anyway, um, I, I want to like the movie. And then it's got this, it's just really weird how. The people are just hateful toward each other. And they just like, it's like they just break down quickly and they just all turn on each other, you know? So yeah. it's not a very happy movie to begin with. But anyway, it's called Beneath from 2013. I just wanted to go through some of this. Stuff. Was, was that on, Tim? Was you, that Tim is, I, I believe what? that is on, Sunbread? that's on Prime. That's on Prime. So I think I I've seen the, that recently, not the movie, but seeing that it was on there. Right. Well, write stuff. it down. So, yeah, write down I'll, beneath. I'll yeah. yeah, write down Deathbed, the bed that eats. Yeah. And then write down <laughs> beneath. Uh, I think Marooned yeah. I watched on Prime as well. Okay. Yeah, because I would, yeah, that I need to, you know, um, actually, uh, yesterday, um, I was going through some of the, you know, when I was getting the movie for today. Right. I was going through and picking out because I want to bring some movies up here to start watching mm-hmm. in the evenings, you know, just right. uh, our standard ones like the Fun House and Death Trap, or not Death Trap, but Death Hunt and White Buffalo and a couple of prophecy and things that I found yesterday. I'm like, you know what? I want to go back and watch some of these. So, but yeah, it'd be nice to cue some stuff up on. Um, but I've been on my Columbo freak out a little bit, you know, and so I, but I want to, <laughs> I want to add a couple. Like right. I told you the other day, I showed you Janet Lee was on the last episode. I <laughs> so she was a whack job, huh? Oh, man. Well, she was, I'll keep it real short, but she was, um, <laughs> Basically, she was an aging actress who uh, had like one good show, another good Broadway show. Well, she wanted to produce her own and her rich husband uh, wouldn't do it, you know. And so she had, you know, so she snuffed him out, you know. (laughs) And uh, and basically the reason he wouldn't let her do it is they found out that she had like uh, deterioration in her her brain. And I forget what the term was, but 
she would remember stuff from years ago, but couldn't remember like what happened. Oh wow! Uh, you know, like maybe yesterday. And so her alien, or not her alien, but her well, her husband. He was an old guy. He was an uh -huh. old goat. Like, uh -huh. Her rich husband. Oh, I he see. was a doctor. He did. He knew it, but didn't tell her about this disease that she had. Uh -huh. You know, because and he thought if she, once she went back to, if she went back to doing stuff full time, it could kill her you know, the strain on her brain or whatever. Right. But it was just really odd one. The whole thing was odd, but she was just bananas. Almost like a happy. medical thriller kind of. Yeah. Sci yeah not sci-fi, but a little like psychological, yeah. like insanity yeah. thriller type of thing. A little yeah, and she off just, center. Hmm. Yes. Well, you like those. You like those. It's like the aging actress going yeah. baddie movies, like the what, uh, the baby yeah. Jane movies and stuff like yes. that. What's the matter with Helen and things? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Good yeah. stuff, though. Yeah. 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 I do like I'll me too, Colombo. They got that on me TV, yeah. and I don't usually watch like – it's just weird. Like a Sunday nights, so they'll have like the, the the Columbo movies, and what blows me away yeah. is like they have one every week. I'm like, man, they had a lot of these. They made a yes. lot, of, and I don't mean the hour long show. I mean they made these a lot two of two ones, hour. Yeah. yeah, I mean they made a lot mm -hmm. of them, and the guest stars on them are anyone from yeah Janet Lee to Patrick McGowan. We saw mm -hmm. him, and then there, and then they have yeah. like George Went would be in one. You know, so it's yeah, it's and and they are well written, pretty good little mysteries and. Yes. I mean, let's just. Let, I mean, Peter Falk is is perfect. He was born to play that role. He was born yeah, to play Columbo. You know, he's great in he's that. He's such a bumbling. Not really. All he does, he bumbles around. And like this one, they woke him up to come check on the husband, mm -hmm. and he'd forgot like his badge. He forgot his pad. You know, his pad <laughs> that he's always writing on. He uh, just was like his hair was all disheveled, and it was funny. You he's know, a he, man he, after your right, heart, just, Mr. Ben Harley. Yes, man after your heart. Uh, it was perfect. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like this every day. <laughs> chaos is reigning in his world as well. So, <laughs> Right, exactly. Uh, speaking so. of chaos reigning, Mr. Ben Harley, let's get to our official yeah. little film let's uh, do that, for this week. So from this week, from 1971, we uh, have the Hammer film, Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. Yes. Let me get out Movie Guy yeah. here, and I'll give you a short storyline synopsis for okay. Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right. An archaeological expedition brings back to London the coffin of an Egyptian queen known for her <laughs> magical powers. Her spirit returns in the form of a young girl, and strange things start to happen. <laughs> okay. Okay. All righty then. Thank you, Mr. Three Year Old. Okay. So, yeah. I got to bring back all boom, boom. Big bad <laughs> things start happening. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, this is, um, uh, again, it's 1971. It is a Hammer film. Now, here's, I'm just starting right here with this. This is an <laughs> adaptation of Bram Stoker's yeah, Jewel, The it. Jewel of the Seven Stars. Seven Stars being yes. the Big Dipper, which is shown throughout the movie. There'll be yes. like a, a ring with a reflection in it or a crystal ball, Something and you'll the see the Big Dipper. With, yeah, you'll yeah, see the Big Dipper yeah. everywhere. Okay. Now, yeah. so the thing is, is that this this was the first time on film, I think uh, Hammer had done a television show based on this story, but this was the first movie adaptation of this story. There was okay. another one that I w that I I about lost my marbles because I don't have it and I have everything, Mr. Ben Arlo. I own every movie yes, known, <laughs> but I don't have this one and it bothers me. So the other movie that I remember from our youth that this is the exact same, the exact same story of is okay. the nineteen eighty Charlton Heston film The Awakening. Oh, okay. Do you yeah. remember right. The Awakening? Yeah. Do you remember yeah. being horribly dismayed when you found out it wasn't a shambling mummy movie? Right, yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yes, this is not a mummy movie. And to no. explain that, uh, Bram Stoker wrote this before they knew the Egyptians made mummies. Oh, they knew so that they made go. pyramids and tombs and things, but they they hadn't uh, they hadn't discovered King Tutankhamun's uh, tomb yet, so they hadn't okay. found one that was intact. So they didn't know about the mummies; they hadn't found any yet, and stuff yeah. like that. So um, interesting, but there is no shambling mummy in this. No. There is a undead woman in it, mm -hmm. and I don't know what she looked like when she was alive, but yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but <laughs> yeah. But boy, is she disintegrating well. Mm-hmm. She, she sure is. is. She sure is like <laughs> turning into dust. Awful good. Awful good. So yes, the lovely Valerie Leon uh, oh. stars in this movie playing Margaret. Now we're going to call yes. it Margaret Fuchs. It's spelled okay. F U. Okay. C H S. The yes. way they were pronouncing it in this movie does not lend itself to an American dialect. No. It's basically <laughs> fucks. Yeah. It's Fox. Fox. Yeah. I kept saying yeah. Fox. And I'm like, that's just because of your accent. I don't want to say it. So yes. we're going to say Fuchs. Okay. Yes, sir. It's because I don't want to say that. I just can't. I don't have the maturity level to go through this entire <laughs> review and not say no. Fuchs. Okay. Just let you know that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so she plays, okay, Margaret, who is uh, we've unbelievably seen, oh, attractive. Oh. I. I <laughs> They she has so many page. curves. I read her. I'm not going to tell you yes. what she said to me, but I read her. Yeah. A lot of vowels. Yes. A lot of vowels. Um, yeah. She's ridiculously hot. I mean, yes. ridiculously hot, um, which is good for the movie. Uh, so it mm-hmm. is starring her and co-starring her cleavage. Yes. Uh, now, it's great, too, because when we open up the film, we see the cosmos, right? And yeah. the second thing we see is her boobs. Yes. <laughs> okay. Good way to Harley, start. where the hell are her nipples at? I don't know. I was looking for them. There's so much cleavage, <laughs> I'm convinced she doesn't have. You know what? They yeah. must be the size of dimes. Yes. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Me too. Just like, you know. Yes. But, man, are they really. Um, yeah. So, anyway, um, Valerie Leon is just beautiful, which is you, no doubt why she got the role in this movie. But uh, she was yeah. in, she's actually in a couple of Bond movies. She's in Never Say Never Again, and she's in The Spy Who Loved Me. So she's in – she's so oh, okay. hot. She's yeah. with Connery, and she's with Roger Moore. Um, yeah. <laughs> they brought her back. <laughs> right. She is wearing a wig in this movie, though. That's not her – Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, she even <laughs> said – she's like, I have dark hair and stuff. I don't know why I wore the wig, but it works on her. I'm doing okay with it. Um, it sure does. Right. So – this movie, so now that we've gotten that, we've started to get that out of the way. Because the way, yeah. I'm just going to have to let the people know, you're going to be just really tired of us talking yeah. about how good looking she is by Tennis Silver. Especially my yeah. wife is going to be the most tired of listening to us talk about the shirt. So, uh, yeah. yeah, so the, the movie is basically a mummy movie uh, story without a mummy, which is what this is. Without and it's look. so yeah. frustrating because of that. Because it's, it's a group of archaeologists or explorers who do go into a tomb of an Egyptian yes. queen and they do desecrate it, but they don't find a mummy. They find everything else, but they, when they open yeah. her tomb, she's perfect. It's yes. It, and it is Valerie. Like she, yes. Yeah. It doesn't look like she's aged at all. No, at all. No. As a matter of fact, <laughs> Angie hated her so much. She was yelling at her for breathing. <laughs> yeah. She she's was. In breathing. There too. I go, Oh God. That's what you, I thought at one point I was like, is she alive or dead? Cause I see her breathing. <laughs> I think Angie was just criticizing her because she was meow, had a claw. Yeah, out. get that off my TV. Yeah, don't blame her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but so they they do this, and then of, and then right when they go in this tomb, uh, the character of Valerie Leone, Margaret, is born <laughs> at that moment, the same moment that they open up the the the, the coffin uh, yeah. for the queen. Yeah, then she's born. So then we cut to years later, and all the people who went into this tomb are now about ready to become victims of a curse. Yes. And the little girl that was born at the moment that they opened up, that they opened up the, uh, the, the uh, coffin. Sarcophagus, yeah. Yeah, grows up to look <laughs> exactly like her. And, and this has been in all these mummy movies. Like, the story is sort of regurgitated, but we usually also have a mummy, right? Yeah. We, yeah. We, we usually mm-hmm. have a queen that the mummy's after. Yes. And we always have a modern woman who looks exactly like the queen. Like the mummy. Yes. Yeah. So we have everything here except a mummy. Right. Her curves are the only thing saving the non mummy quotient here because it's still hurting without a mummy. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is. You know, because there's not as much um, terror in this movie. You know what right. I mean? It's more just, you know, it's full on. I mean, there's, they don't really pull a lot of punches on certain things, but it's just like, it's not like. Oh, it's gory. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty gory. But a lot of the mummy movies have a lot of. It's, it has a little bit more of a 
uh, sense of danger to it a little bit more, I guess, or something. I don't know. Yeah, no, but, the curse movies are have a hard time with me and the curse movies have a hard relationship. Yeah. Put that way, I, I, yeah. I, I don't. Now, now, in fairness, like they had this thing going with her hand. Okay, so she. She has yeah. this ring. She had the this, crawling hand. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, the 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 Egyptian queen has like had the, this ring on her hand, okay, or whatever. Yeah. And the hand was severed in the in the the tomb itself, so that the hand was a disembodied hand. So this is basically trying to become a, a hand movie with yeah, a crawling they, they, hand, you know, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they throw the hand out in the desert, and like all oh, that pack of dogs come out of nowhere. Yeah, I'm that's actually a pretty good it, part. Yeah. I think those are actually jackals. Yeah. yeah. And that was yeah, actually a really yeah. neat part, because I was like, I, I even looked over to Angie, I was like, I think those are actually jackals, which is, yeah. so So they're, they're kind of signaling this is going to be a hand movie. Yeah. Because uh, the hand even ends up killing one of the jackals, like. Yes. And yeah. it crawls away. <laughs> right. Well, and so then, like the uh, uh, her Valerie Leone Margaret, her father is played by Andrew Kier, uh, who was Quatermass and Quatermass in the Pit, uh, the oh, one where okay. they where yeah, they are underground yeah. and they and they have like the grasshopper monsters that are underground and on the mm-hmm. tube yeah. and stuff. Um, he was also the uh, like the friar guy in Dracula, Prince of Darkness. I like him, but okay. he replaced yeah. uh, Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing, oh, really? spent one day shooting, and that's when his wife began to pass. Oh, so boy. he had to leave after one day of shooting to tend to his wife, who did pass. That is right when his wife did. And so Andrew wow. Pierre came in and took over. Uh, and you can kind of tell that something's missing. There's an actor missing yeah. somewhere, and that's what it was. Yeah. Cushing was supposed to be the big star of the film, and that, that was supposed to be his character. Um, he would have done well in it. Uh, but but Andrew Pierre oh. is oh, a yeah, good actor. Sure. you know. So Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah um, definitely. So we got a lot going on here about this ring. So when they... F- it all goes back to the hand, the ring, and then the the daughter, Margaret, mm-hmm. who looks just like her. So, Andrew Kier, on like what, like her 18th birthday or something like that, one of her or 20th birthday or something like that, gives her the ring. Yeah. The which looks like a candy ring, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the ring pops. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a hard candy <laughs> ring. Yeah, I kind of wanted to lick it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a huge, huge ring. It's, it's gaudy. Humongous. It is, yeah. it is gaudy, yeah. but that is, but so, yeah. so everybody who went into the, the tomb is cursed. Yes. And, uh, the Margaret character is trying to figure out what her connection to this is. Her boyfriend, her young yes. boyfriend's helping her. Yeah. And all the older people around that were in the tomb are all afraid of her. Because yeah. she looks just like she looks just like yeah. the evil queen, and to be mm-hmm. frank with you, she starts acting like it a little bit yeah. too. She starts becoming yeah. possessed a little bit. I can't tell if she's becoming possessed by the queen or possessed by a sense of power, though. I think yeah, because it's a little bit of both. You're not really mm-hmm. sure, you know. Because once she starts to figure out that she has a little bit of that power, it does start to kind of go to her head a little bit, mm-hmm. or. She uh, she's trying to get some information out of the one guy in the insane asylum, you know, or they're trying to get information, and she can tell that he's scared of her. So then he she that's when she starts to, you know, act like the queen and question him, you know, and it's almost like and you can tell her boyfriend's like, oh, what are you, are you what are you right. doing, you know, like so yeah, that's a pretty good little scene there too because yeah, you're not really sure, right? You know? Her boyfriend's pretty good in it. He's like he ain't taking yeah. none of it. Like he he's no. Yeah, he's not stupid. Some of these characters in these movies are so yeah. stupid, they blunder into things. Now, his death yeah. scene is very strange. I don't know, yeah, like yeah, the car. Let me, let me explain yeah. something very odd to you about this film. And, and that car scene, I think, has something to do with this. No, okay. what, so he, he is warned, like he's, he's going to go save the day. The, the boyfriend is. And, you know, yeah. and, and the, the um, Margaret character says, no, don't, don't. You know, the curse won't allow you. The curse yes. won't allow you to get in its way. It's going to stop you somehow. You're going to die if you do this. Mm-hmm. And he he's indignant about that. He doesn't care. So he has he this takes really off in his cool car. He, he sort of takes off in his car, but his car I don't think ever goes anywhere. It sits out in the countryside, and the camera swings around him. Yeah, and he just makes weird movements. It's a very odd. Like s- like she screams, and then yes. you know, kind of, and and then he. Ends up crashing into a tree. Yes, but like, the way it's then, filmed is very it's like so wrong. Weird. It's, it's very strange. Yeah. Here's what happened: the director is Seth Holt. Okay, yeah. this is very strange. But apparently, he basically died of the hiccups. Really? While this movie was being made, 
what the heck? Okay, so the I, what I am literally telling you what I heard the actor say that for a week he had the hiccups, and they thought that it was funny because they'd be sitting in dailies and stuff, and he could not stop hiccuping. Yeah, and then he died of a heart attack, and That's weird. somehow they connected as a sign. The hiccups is I, I I've never heard anything remotely like this in my entire life, but more yeah. than one of the actors and crew separately separate years, separate interviews and things that I've read and seen have said this, that he had the hiccups real bad. Next thing he was dead like a week yeah. later or something like that. So there was about, I think like five days of shooting left or something like that. Michael Carreras, who was one of the head Han shows at hammer. He went in and finished it okay. for Seth Holt. And one of the okay. things I think he did not understand. No one understood. I think Seth Holt filmed that crash Okay. But never told anyone how in his mind it was supposed to be edited. Oh, wow. Okay. So I don't think anybody knew what to do with it. <laughs> so they're like, what, what is this? What is what, this? What, what do is I this? Do? Yeah. <laughs> I guess just don't edit it. Just throw it together, which is what it looked like they did. So yeah. oddly yeah. enough, the director, Seth Holt, died while they were making this. And he did direct some – he directed The Nanny with Betty Davis, okay. in it, if you've ever seen that. Yeah. It's a pretty good yeah. movie. Um, so he, and he was kind of a British guy. He, he had worked for Hammer before making a couple things. And um, so there's a little bit of a push and pull in this movie, too. And it didn't help it at all that the director died, of course. No, geez, yeah. Right, right, while they were, yeah. while they were making it. Um, and I think Carreras, and to Carreras' credit, he, he gave Seth Holt total credit. Like, he didn't want the credit. I think they were genuinely right. cared for each other, you know, and stuff. And they liked Seth Holt. And he was a talented okay. guy, you know, or something like that. Um, now, the villain in this movie is one of the guys who was one of the original desecrators of the tomb. Right? Yeah, and he's like living across the street from old, like, uh, Margaret a, and Andrew yes, Kier. And her yeah. husband. Yeah, yeah no, her, and her father. Dad, her her dad's dad's yeah, father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, his, the, that's the actor James Valeris. All right? Okay. Or Valeris. And uh, he played yeah. a, a Corbeck. I guess of his name. He was in a, he was also in a uh for your eyes for your eyes only a James Bond movie. He was in oh, okay. the 1972 The Asylum. He was in The Nanny, which was a self-help oh, right. movie. And he's also in this really interesting movie from 1991 called Let Let Me or sorry, Let Him Have It. Good okay. interesting movie. So anyway, this guy uh he is a smarmy McDavid Warner wannabe. Yeah. <laughs> He looks like he was separated at birth from David Warner. Yeah, you're right there. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty sure David Warner calls that guy Mirror. It's, he looks just like him. So he is sort of a villain that he wants to see this curse come, come to fruition. Come right? to fr yeah. Yep. So he mm -hmm. wants he wants the the uh, the Margaret character to become completely possessed by the Egyptian queen. Right. Yeah. He now, wants to bring the queen back to life, basically. Right. So I ask you, Mr. Ben Harley, my, yes. my humble co-host here to this show, can you tell me where the financial gain or any kind of personal benefit is for him to see no. this curse come to fruition? No, not at all. That's I didn't know if he was going to try to, like, yeah, Are you, is he trying to be second in charge? Because it doesn't really say, you know, like, and I don't <laughs> think he has anything... To, yeah, he doesn't have nothing to gain from it at all, you know. Like, in charge of what? I mean, so he brings yeah. her back and she's mean. Yeah, okay. Maybe her top, I don't know. Well, Charges now if he's trying, to, if he's trying to hit on her, then we have a story. I yeah. get it. I yeah. totally get yeah. it. Because, but it's not even really that either, though. There's not, you know. Can you can you imagine like all of the all of the men actors in this movie trying to play it straight? Oh, like God. just not falling on the knees, just going, please, <laughs> yeah, please, just, just go to dinner with me, something, please, yeah. you know. Yeah. Now, yeah, um, I'm going to bring this up. I don't know how. Uh, I'm just going to say this now that we're talking about you know this stuff. But there is also a scene where the lovely Valerie Leone is laying on a bed, snacking on a banana. Yeah, uh, there's a couple innuendos in that whole scene. It, right before that, she's sitting. With the guy's cat right between her pet and her kid. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a few innuendos in that scene, like or those two scenes that there where they're in that bedroom. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> am yeah. I seeing that or am I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I could have watched that all day. <laughs> yeah. all day. I mean, I it got to the point. I, it literally got to the point where 
we were sitting there watching that, and she and that scene opens, and she's got her mouth right on the on the head of a banana. Yeah. And I was like, okay, 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 yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I basically was begging the movie to stop. Yeah, I was yeah. Begging yeah. it, please stop, yeah. please yeah. stop. Yeah. For the love of all this holy, I'm almost fifty. Stop it. You know. Stop it. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm well, high risk. To do to okay. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. I mean, it's like, stop, please. I can only take what so you, much. What are you trying to prove? You know what I mean? Like, okay, I get it already. I get it. Right. Um, uh, okay, so it. there's all the nuts and bolts of the movie. It's a cursed movie. Yeah. And, of course, all the people, one by one, are getting are meeting Take their demise. Them. But let's talk about this for Alexa. But what kind of movie is this, Harley? I mean, it's not a mummy movie, but then again, we have the undead spirit kind of taking over. Yeah. Uh, Valerie Leone. It's not. It's it's a hand movie, and there's a hand crawling around, but the hand just disappears yeah. for long periods of time, and no one talks about the damn thing. No. And it seems and important, wish- but it's yeah. not. I mean, people are. I mean, would it be cool as hell if people were getting picked off one by one by a disembodied hand that was bloody and stuff and attacking people? It's right there on a yeah. silver platter for them to do this, and it doesn't happen in the movie. It's very frustrating. Right. Very frustrating. Yeah. Um, no, for sure, definitely. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> but it's so funny in this in the movie too. Everybody dies or by around the throat. Yeah, that's true. Everybody gets their throat ripped out. Yeah, it's all always the same thing. It's not like, well, this guy gets this and this guy. I mean, different things happen to each one person, you know. But right. it's always by the throat, right? You know. And so I don't know, Tim, if maybe the hand was supposed to be in it a little bit more, mm-hmm. and they decided not to. And I'll tell you the truth. I kind of wish it was. I do too. I kind of wish it was because I think it would have been a lot creepier, and, or, or to you know, and that right. could have been a little bit more of the monster of the movie because you really don't know who the monster of the movie is. It's just the curse, I guess. Right. Really, you know? Right. And I'm so, kind of okay, sort of with. That's kind of a mummy trope a little bit as well. Is it the guy in the fez yeah. burning the tan leaves? Is he the bad guy, yeah. or is the mummy, or is the mummy just doing someone else's bidding? I get all that. There's a lot of like. Yeah give and take in these stories, but, but you actually have, at least, you know, the mummy is the one directly killing people, you know, like at least physically And this thing, there's just things that fall on people, but you never really see like what falls on people. You know, it's like, is it the hand? I mean, I, 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 I'm very frustrated, but it's not a bad movie. Don't get me wrong. It's a very good movie, but it's not satisfying the, the horror fan as much as the, uh Fantasy fan, maybe, or, sure. or something yeah. like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, there's, I just don't know. Like I said, I, at first, I really thought that hand was going to be a lot more in the film, mm-hmm. and I know they do show it like uh, once again, like later on, just kind of like sitting there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the weird thing to me, Tim, is okay, like they, the main, you know, the queen or whatever, mm-hmm. the mummy. They chop her hand off, so there, there. Hence, there's the hand. Right. But the <laughs> her wrist or whatever they cut the hand continues to bleed. Yeah, constantly. It pumps throughout blood the out whole of it. movie. Yes. And I'm like, where's all that blood going? Because that. That's just, right. I think by now the whole room right, would right. have been filled with blood. Like I don't. It's just weird. Like I don't know why they they show it numerous times. It's probably because it's a good effect. Blood. It's really effective. Yeah. It looks gross. It's kind of yeah. it's kind of icky. Yeah. So they do show it. So that's all. Yeah. I, 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 but I feel you. I totally feel you. Uh, this movie is needlessly is. confusing. <laughs> it's needlessly yes. confusing. Yeah. And I think I think. It's got something to do with them damn flashbacks and everything. They should yeah, have opened yeah. the movie. They should have opened the movie where they are desecrating the tomb and then the yeah. girl is born. And mm-hmm. then they say 10 year or 20 years later and show the girl as an adult screaming and waking yeah. up and stuff. I'll take the cleavage. Yeah. Don't 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 edit none of that out. Don't do that. Yeah. But <laughs> now don't do that. No, 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 don't, don't, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> You'll only make me mad. Don't do that. Yeah. No, but 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 they sh- but so it becomes like needlessly kind of confusing because even Angie yeah, was kind of saying she's like, I'm, I'm confused. The only thing that was keeping me together on it was that I kind of saw it as a mummy movie without a mummy. So right. it was a yeah. guidepost, but if I wasn't keeping that in my head, I'd be totally lost. Sure, like what was going? No, on. No, it is confusing when they go in there and desecrate it. It's, it doesn't really make a lot, of, and then you're not really sure the people afterwards too. You know, like who was that? Was that the one? Guy? You know, right? It's, it's, right. It goes really quick. 
too. Right. Very quick, the that that scene, the desecration scene. Mm-hmm. You know, but and, and they don't uh, age much. You don't really no. They, they don't do a good job like showing people are older or younger in it. And so you're no. kind of like, wait, did that but just her happen? Father looks like the same yeah. guy, right? Like, exactly. Like so did, you're yeah. wondering, is this five minutes ago or twenty years yeah. ago? Like, what? Right. Where was is this, this scene happening right now? Yeah. Yes, it's right. it's yeah. it's like it's not put together correctly. I don't think. I think had it been no. had they not used a flashback technique and just made it a straight line, I think that it yeah. would be a lot less uh, confusing. Yeah. Because yeah. it's needlessly confusing. There's nothing confusing about the story necessarily, but the, but the way they, and the way they're bringing, it's almost like they introduce you to, let's say the one woman who's like, who has like a, a psychic powers yeah. and they show her sitting, doing a reading with someone. You don't know who the hell yeah, she that, is. You no, don't know who she is. No. Then they go to a guy who's in an insane asylum, yeah. and he's he's holding on to this the snake statue, but mm-hmm. you don't know what the snake statue is. You don't know who this guy is. And meanwhile, yeah. five minutes ago, you had a woman giving a reading that you've forgotten about, and yeah. now you're on to this guy. Now you're confused again. Mm-hmm. Then they show yeah. Andrew Kier, and you're like, and then there's the guy that runs the uh, oh, the antiques thing or the. Oh, he's just the other guy that's the expert on like the old uh, artifacts and stuff. I guess he might work at yeah. a museum, let's say, and you don't know who he yeah. is. And everyone's mm-hmm. really afraid of Valerie Leon, the Margaret character, and yes. you don't know why they're afraid of her. And then they have a flashback, and you don't realize necessarily it's a flashback. And even right. when you realize it's a flashback, it could be a flashback to two years ago. They right. don't say this was 20 years ago. So then you see a baby being born. You don't know who the baby is. And that comes no. out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. It's so, like the mother dies, and then at first they're like, "Oh, the baby's dead." They're like, "Wait, no, no, the baby's not dead." Like, right, and that guy was like creeping the creeping didn't see the doctor oh, guy. He was. Yeah, he, yeah, he was. He's in uh, Clockwork Orange. He's the guy that shows up. He's the guy that shows up in the morning when uh, yeah. when uh, when Alex is in his tidy white. He's walking around his house, and he's like the social worker guy. And Clockwork Orange just keeping his eye on Alex and all those guys. He's, he's a creepy guy. And he's like, he's, he's like, oh, Alex, where you are? Alex, 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 where are you? How are the boys? Where are you? And then he and then he takes a drink out of the glass with the false teeth in it. Oh, uh, yeah. I right. like that guy. Uh, I like him a lot. He's good. Yeah. I, I tell you, he's got some of the coolest glasses. He's got oh. some of the glasses that the potentate of hate needs. Hell yeah, he does. That's, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I need some of them glasses for my neck. Show. Hell yeah! Actually, cool. I, I have I have a pair pretty close to that. The nice. ones he's wearing, though, <laughs> Those are pretty funny. Some tight yeah. glasses, I'll tell you right now. So, yes, they are. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's just a it's a menagerie of characters. There's a lot of characters in it due to the fact that we have a curse movie of a bunch of people yeah. like broke into a tomb. The problem is, is they're not introduced in a way where you mm-hmm. can coherently remember who they are easily. You have to watch this movie a couple times. In order yeah. to really to really grasp onto people, so it's needlessly confusing. The other thing is this, and we've ad nauseum half kitted around and half fell fallen to our knees over yes. the attractiveness of Valerie Leone. Now, mm-hmm. unfortunately, she never did in her career and always refused to do nudity. Yeah. So there is nudity in this film, but they are all body doubles. Yes. And yeah. and. I, I don't know how to put this, but if you actually yeah. can tear your eyes away and just look at the face yeah. of the the woman that you're looking at nude, you'll see easily yeah. it's nowhere near her mm-hmm. at all at mm-hmm. whatsoever. No. Um, and even I think the when she's running through the woods, yeah, uh, that's not her either. Oh, it isn't. Okay. No, uh-uh. no, no. It's another, yeah. It's, yeah, it's another body double or another double, huh. basically, for okay. her. Yeah, so. And um, that's a weird one, too, because she just, like, runs through the woods and runs to that lady's house, mm-hmm. who must have been the one that was doing the uh, readings, that must have been in the tomb yeah. when they desecrated yeah. it, because then she goes over there and drop, puts a cat there that, mm-hmm. you know, and then the cat statue, and then the cat statue starts to, like, claw her face. Mm-hmm. You know, without clawing it, you know, also right. should be like, ah, should I have marks on it. Curse face? clawed it. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Right. So that's a really weird kind of part, too. Right. It, Once it again, really... everybody's throat gets cut. <laughs> everybody's throat gets cut. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like and it the really, doctor. Yes. Yes. She pushes him out the window. 
kind of. She don't even show her pushing him. He just goes flat out the window. Right. Of course, his throat's cut, you know, right. <laughs> like, or, or not cut, just you know, and it's not just the cut, they're like slashed. Yeah, like, like just like, gnarled, gnarled open, and almost. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, and it, that's the thing. It's it doesn't. Everything is there, you know, Harley. I mean, yes. honestly, let's just let's. Look, Seth Holt died. The director died. I got to think that some of this stuff might have been tidied up had he well, been he alive. I mean, if he had it in sure. his head how some of this stuff was going to go, he didn't expect to die, I'm sure. Yeah. So I'm sure he was just like, well, we'll just tighten that up. I know what that is. We have everything we need on film. Because usually what do you do as an artist or anything else? You put too much yeah. of something so that you can take it away. So right. I might record five guitar tracks on a song, but I'm only going to use maybe one or two of them. But I got five right. of them there because, you know, hey, what if I screw up one part? I can patch that in right there or something. Yeah, I, I, sure. I got to think yeah, maybe that's what was happening here. And by the time Michael Carreras got involved, it wasn't his movie. No. And he's probably mm-hmm. looking at this going, oh, What do I do here? I mean, what do I hear? And us watching it now with the benefit of all this time and everything, we can see all these mis- mistakes or confusing parts. Yeah. I, I got to think that that's what it was. And it's mostly in post. Sure. It's mostly in post. I mean, I think that that this movie should have been edited differently, and yeah. maybe maybe Seth Holt might have. That being said, it's still a good movie. It's yeah. just you have to watch it a couple it's times. You it's a little confusing, right? It's so you, right, you basically have to know the story and then go and watch it, right? And then I think you get it. But if you don't know the story, like most people wouldn't, if they just go see a movie, they're being told a story. Sure. You know, you know what I mean? It's it's it, um you can play around with like the Moby Dick story because everybody knows it. Yeah. You know, you right. can play around with uh, the night before Christmas because everybody knows that. Yeah, you, know, you can play around with the Scrooge story because everyone knows that another Christmas thing. You can play around with uh oh I don't even know Humpty Dump. You know, these stories that we all know, these stories right. that that I mean we can play around with them and make them an artistic way, but not everybody knows the jewel of the seven stars. No, uh, uh-uh. you know, so no, uh, it's it's. I mean, don't you think yeah. I'm right? I mean, you yeah, feel that sure. it's yeah, just but... like it's. It, there, there's a not confusing movie there. They just need to edit it down so it's not confusing anymore. I guess. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I think yeah, that's a lot that was wrong because I like this movie and I'm going to give it like a great vape up. Yeah, but yeah. I think that it um it it just was confusing yeah. that to me to a point where I'm like, well, maybe it's just me. And I'm like, no, no, I don't think it was. I think, mm-hmm. Especially now with you and I talking, I'm like, oh no, I think it was the movie. <laughs> it it really was, do, it know? was. And, and, yeah. and I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a mild grape ape up. And the thing is, is because there, there is a good movie there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's, it is like, it, it's, it's like Humpty Dumpty. It's like Humpty Dumpty. It like yeah. fell off. It's been broken into pieces <laughs> and somebody taped it yeah. back together in the wrong order. Um, right, right. And, and I, I'm telling you, Harley, had they honed in on the hand being a monster, yeah, we'd have ourselves a classic here because it's I got so the too. gore, it's got the horror, it's got the nice looking lady, it's got the smarmy McSmarmingtons in it, mm-hmm. it's got the sympathetic characters in it, it's got everything you yes. need. It just needs to be in a different order and put together a little bit different. And damn it, that and I know the hand doesn't look it does look like a toy kind of, but yeah, uh, it, they, they threw some blood on it. It looked good. I, I I really think because of the the way that the the people's throats because when when the jackals attack the hand and then the hand the hand rips the throat out of the jackal. Mm-hmm. So I mean, and every everything else from that point on, everybody even. No matter what happens, their throats didn't gore like ripped out, right? right. You know, like something right. out of the Howling or or American Werewolf, you know. And it's just like, so I think I, I think that ham was supposed to be a big, much bigger part. And it was um, almost like of, maybe, of yeah, maybe, maybe we, uh, we were supposed to like interject it, like we just assumed it was like I didn't know what was crap. Yeah. I don't know what was grabbing people's throats and stuff. I mean, right? I knew there was a hand, but man, there was no suspense. If right, you, even right. if you watch the movie The Hand with Michael Caine in it, where there really isn't a hand, <laughs> even if you watch that, there yeah, is a hand right. crawling around people's houses and stuff. And maybe it's symbolic of Michael Caine being there, but you still visually get a hand everywhere. Yes, exactly. You don't get that. Yep. You get it intermittently. Yep. Intermittently. And right. nothing is focused in on enough to know what you're supposed to be focusing in on. It's just, it's, yeah. it's, it's a little clumsy. Yeah. A little clumsy. But again, yeah, a little bit. 
Mild great ape up. And I think what we're saying is we're, we're not saying it's a horrible movie. It's a frustrating movie because it could be such a better movie. Yes. And so it's yes, frustrating because of that. And yeah, but Harley, I think telling you that Seth Holt died probably is yeah, that, shutting that, a little light that, on that. Exactly. So, yeah, that helps kind of <laughs> right. piece together why, I think, you know. Right, so. right. So, all right. Well, we're both going to give uh, the Blood from the Mummies team a mild grape ape up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, big grape ape up for Valerie Leone. She oh, is a, to the rafters. Oof, yes, she is. She is very, very attractive. She's ridiculous. Yes, attractive. she is. Yes. So, and <laughs> yes, good for her. Is. I thought she actually was a very good in this, too. It's not oh, just her yeah. looks. Yeah. I think no, she really no, was she's good. good in it. Yeah, the acting yeah. in this is great. Yeah. It's really good. And when and she th- turns a little evil, it she it it definitely shows. Like yes. she does a good job. You yes. Know? And it's not over the top and or anything like that. Right. And I think that that the James James Valeris or v- Valeris or whatever, the 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 jerk in the movie. Yeah. The the uh David the David Warner wannabe guy, he's Warner, he's good yeah. in as a jackass. <laughs> and special kudos to Andrew Kerr, who just walked in on a Monday and started playing a character that he wasn't supposed to play. Right. And taking right. over for Peter Cushing, my guy. I mean, yeah. so I have a little soft yeah, that, spot. That, that would Andrew. be hard to do. You yes. Know, so, yeah, I have a little soft spot for Andrew Kier for doing that. You know, I think that's, that's, of course you're going to take a job, but still, sure. It's not an easy thing for a respected actor to walk into a role. He's not prepared for And You know, it's like me right. walking up on stage, not knowing songs. So, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, kudos to him. So a uh, frustrating movie, but, there's lots of good parts to it. Yeah, yeah great parts. All right, Mr. Benhill, let's get the hell out of here. Uh, All right, I'm not but... sure what we're doing next week. Uh, I bet it's going to be bloody. Yeah, there I you bet go. It'll <laughs> be in, I bet it will end up being bloody. So, uh, yeah. All right, until then, all you deep thinkers, be good to each other. Be safe. Uh, we'll be right back here next week, so stay spooky, and we'll talk to you then. Keep it creepy, people. You've been listening to The Timo and Harley Show, brought to you by ScreenPrintingFactory.com your affordable one-stop solution to all your screen printing needs.